All right. Uh, thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. Okay, to our uh, distinguished uh, guest, uh, Star Master, Ms. Kim and Mr. Hyung, our country manager, uh, Wendy Lee, all our Royal Leaders Club members as well as our Little Clubs members, our center managers, our Sharon Rose masters, my friends all in Atomy and friends who you brought uh, for this Success Academy. A very good morning to all of you. Thank you, thank you. I'm uh, very delighted uh, again to be invited by the company to share uh, two topics with you this morning. One is the company introduction and the other one is the uh, compensation plan. All right. So um, let's quickly start because uh, I've been given only uh, 45 minutes to complete this task. So let's quickly uh, go through the slides. So by the way, my name is Jim Koo. I'm a Diamond Master. Uh, I'm also part of the uh, leadership team in the Tai Seng Lifestyle Center. So let's quickly take a snapshot of Atomy, right? I mean, the company started in 2009 in Korea. Uh, the company just turned 10 years old uh, this year, right, in 2019. And uh, today, Atomy is present in 14 countries, like most of you are aware of that. And uh, the 2018 global revenue reached $1.1 billion US dollars in uh, 2018. So the company uh, achieved a $1 million target in less than 10 years. If you study other network marketing company, most of the other network marketing company achieved their $1 billion revenue in more than 10 to 15 years. So it's a very impressive uh, performance for a company like Atomy. All right. And we move into our new headquarters uh, this year. Uh, you saw the wonderful video earlier uh, on the uh, view of the uh, new headquarters. And obviously the company is loved by many, many people. And today we have a global population of members of about 3 million people. And uh, Wendy shared earlier uh, this morning that in Singapore, we have about 140,000 members. All right? So, and this number is growing. So let's give uh, Atomy Singapore a big round of applause, right? So the question many people ask now that we are already 10 years old is will Atomy be a sustainable long-term company, right? CEO Park or Chairman Park has actually shared in some of his videos that uh, Atomy is going to be a 50, 100-year-old company, right? And we've seen a lot of success stories of companies, particularly in Japan, right, that lasted more than 100 years and as long as 200 years. So the questions we want to ask ourselves when we come into this company and participate in the business is to understand whether this company is going to be a long-term sustainable company. All right? And to understand this question, uh, we have to look a little bit about uh, uh, statistics, right? Because in 1978, all right, the average lifespan of a company is approximately 60 years. All right? In 2016, in a study by Credit Suisse, all right, they say that the lifespan of the company has now shortened because of disruptive technologies like robotics, artificial intelligence, and also disruptive business model like Uber, like Airbnb. All right? So that's a very interesting stats. But there's also another very interesting perspective that I wanted to share with all of you this morning is that you know, some of the symptoms of why a lifespan of a company is shortened is also primarily due to the leadership of a company where the leader is completely oblivious to the changes around him and also all right, not being able to see or envision the future. So that's a very, very interesting new perspective. And uh, I'm beginning to realize that indeed it's really the leadership of the company that really can and, and uh, assured all right, the continuity and the sustainability of a company. So with that, I was reading a book uh, very recently. Again, I, I love to read books. So this is a book called The Infinite Game. All right? It's all about game theory. And uh, Simon Sinek, I don't know how many of you here heard of Simon Sinek. Uh, I hope no. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so we have one uh, Sharon Rose master here. Who, so Simon Sinek is a business consultant or organization consultant, all right? 
excellent uh, author. He wrote a very successful first book called Start With Why. And then he wrote the second book called uh, Leaders Eat Last. And then uh, his, his latest book in 2019, which he just published, is called The Infinite Game. All right? And The Infinite Game was a motivation from an earlier book written by a gentleman called James Cassie. In 1986, he wrote a book called Finite Versus Infinite Game. So when Simon read the book, he was so inspired and started to understand, all right, in business, we are actually all playing in the infinite game. So he wrote this book after all the inspiration and did a lot of research and study. And I want to share a little bit about the book with all of you, just to answer the question of whether Atomy right, is going to be a long-term sustainable company. Right? Shall we do that? Okay, so... Let's define what a finite game means and what an infinite game is. Right? In a finite game, all right, the players are known. All right? The players are known. Everybody knows who the players are. The rules are fixed. All right? The measures are absolute or arbitrary because there's a referee involved. And then the objective is to win. All right? So in a game of chess, in a game of soccer, in the games of football, in the games of basketball, all right, we know all the players. Right? All right? Okay? The rules are fixed. All right, and the measurements are pretty absolute, and we have a referee that gives the arbitrary decision. And finally, all right, there's an end point. All right, the end point is there will be a winner and a loser in a finite game. All right, and this typically has to do with sports and many other uh, sports-related type of activity. So that's the definition of a finite game. So let's now look at uh, infinite game. Infinite games are like politics. I like business, and it's all about life as well. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, and define what the uh, infinite game is. Infinite game has known and unknown players. So players come into the, the business, and players can go out of the business as well. Likewise in politics, likewise in the game of life. All right? The rules are changeable. In an infinite game, the rules are always changeable. The measure is all based on trends, observed trends, changes in the trend, changes in the direction. And the final end point is to stay in the game and perpetuate the game. All right, let me give you some examples. All right, in 1968, all right, the North Vietnamese all right, did a surprise attack to the US and Allied forces. They targeted 125 camps and they attacked the US and the Allied forces for one single month. All right, bombing the Americans as well, the Allied forces. All right, the whole process happened on the third day. Those who are Vietnamese here, any Vietnamese here? Vietnamese? No? Yeah? Yeah, okay, I hear you. Good. All right, third day in Vietnamese is the equivalent of the Chinese Lunar New Year. Is that correct? Yeah. So on third day, all right, they break traditions and they attack the US. 125 targets. All right. It, it took them one month to attack this group of uh, troops from America as well, the Allied Forces. The, the funny thing and the strange thing is that the Americans and the Allied Forces repel every single of the attack. Okay? And at the end of the one month uh, so-called uh, uh, war or battle, all right, the Americans only lost about 150 Marines. But the Viet Cong, all right, the Don Vietnamese, lost almost 5,000 of their troops. Interesting, isn't it? But if you study the Vietnam War, you've studied Vietnam War, in the 10 years of the Vietnam War, all right, many battles was won by the Americans. Many battles, because they have the technology, they have the know-how. Right? The Viet Cong was obviously, from a technological standpoint, much weaker than the United States. When you look at the end of the war, all right, after 10 years, all right, the US actually lost about maybe... 50,000 of the troops, but the Vietnamese North Vietnam lost 3 million people. Why did, they, why did the Americans lose the war? Why? It's because the Americans were playing a finite game to win the war. The Vietnamese was playing the game for, to survive and fighting for their life. One is playing the infinite game, one is playing the finite game. And in an infinite game, all right, your, your, your strategy is continue to stay in the game and perpetuate the game. 
All right? That's the reason why after 10 years, the United States decided that they do not have the willpower anymore to fight the North Vietnamese. So they give up, they, they have burned a lot of the resources, and they got out of the game. And then they lost the war. Okay, very interesting, right? The same thing in, happens in Afghanistan. All right? The Russians were fighting the Mujahideen, who was fighting for their life, but the, the Russians were fighting to win the game. All right? And in the 1970s, in politics, another example. All right? In politics, all right, there is two superpowers in the 1970s. You have the Soviet Union, you also have the United States. And they were fighting this Cold War over three very, very key tensions area. One is nuclear weapons. All right, who wants to be a more powerful nuclear weapon uh, 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 owner in the world? The second area was economic power, and the third area was ideology. Okay, so the Soviet Union was defending themselves, trying to prove to the Americans that they are better in terms of their, uh, their, their, their wealth of a nuclear power armament. And then they were trying to promote communism versus the Americans trying to promote capitalism. Right. So in 1986, the Berlin Wall falls, right? Everybody knows, right? North and no, uh, East and West Germany came together as one country. And because of the 1986 uh, war that, that fell in Berlin, the Americans thought that they won the war, the Cold War. But actually, in fact, they, they, they didn't realize that the Cold War was actually an infinite game all right, that the Soviet Union was playing. And then, lo and behold, all right, in, in Cold War 2. Point, I call it Cold War 1.0. In Cold War 2.0, what happened is that we saw new players coming into the game. And we have now the North Koreans all right, fighting the Americans to have power in nuclear um, armament, correct? In the area of economics, we have who? We have now China, all right, trying to gain economic power over the Americans. And in the area of ideologies, all right, we now have the extremists, the Al-Qaeda, all right? September 11, the US, uh, the Americans, sorry, yeah? The Americans didn't realize that there was another, all right, player out there called the extremists that came and you know they they they, they took a plane in the two towers twin towers in uh, New York fell all right and then start to wake up that actually the Cold War was still going on all right so it is very very important for us to understand in business too all right I, I as I read the book I start to realize why the company that I used to work for all right disappeared from the face of this earth so many players come in and many players fall out Right. I was working for a company that didn't last for more than 30 years. Why? Because the leaders in the company had a finite mindset. All they do was trying to make themselves look good, all right? to make themselves win the competition. They were always having a finite mindset to win. But in business, it's not about a finite game. In business, it's always an infinite game. All right? You continue to play to make sure that you stay in the game and you stay in business. Right? That should be the objective of every single business. And a lot of businessmen, and in, in most of uh, corporate in America, all right, many of the CEO have the mindset to always win the competition. All right? Simon Sinek went to do a, a talk in Microsoft. All right? And he says, in the education submit in Microsoft, 70% of the senior executives in Microsoft talks about how to beat Apple. All right? Because they have a finite mindset. All right? And when he went to a similar education submit in Apple, he found that 100% of the executives in Apple right, talked about how to teach teacher, how to teach, how to teach students, how to learn. You see, one company is all very focused about the, the cost all right, of building values for the education sector. Another company all right, was thinking about how to kill the competition. At that point in time, under the leadership of a gentleman called Steve Malber, uh, Palmer, who is the CEO, Microsoft business actually tanked. So these are all real cases of companies who are in business, and especially leadership in business, when they have a finite mindset, and right, they create a lot of mistrust in the company. That's what happened to me, all right? The company that was with the last five years, there was many, many layoffs. As a result, right, many of the employees lost trust with the leadership. Right? There was no more cooperation in the team. Everybody's walking around in the office with a tag on their head. I'm going to expire very soon. All right? And that's what happened to me. In 2012, I expired. All right? I lost my job. Okay? And there was no teamwork. So 
So when you work for a company and the leadership that has got this finite mindset, right, it's very, very risky. All right, so this is a very interesting uh, uh, study. So the next thing I want to talk more is the finite game. We all know that a finite game is played for the purpose of winning. Okay? An infinite game is played for the purpose of continuing the play. All right? So it's very important that as a business, right, the leadership in the business has to continue to think about how to continue to play the game and stay in business for the next 50 to the 100 years. All right? Teamwork is about life. All right? Teamwork is also an infinite game. Marriage is also an infinite game, right? Because you have two players in a marriage, all right? Both of you want to maintain the play as long as you want, correct? Because one partner, if decided to win the game, right, that's what happened, right? You get a divorce, all right? Same thing with friendship, all right? You've got lots of friends coming together. You love one another. You work together. But if some friends within the team try to take advantage of all the members in the team, then what happened, all right? You lose one friend. The guy fall out of the infinite game. Right. So the same thing applies for teamwork. Teamwork is all about playing the infinite game. So the company all right, has already positioned teamwork as one of the core values all right, in Atomy. All right. So in Atomy, we all know about teamwork. That's the reason why we coined the term all right, super synergy of a united heart. All right. Everybody has to be open. We have to respect each other. All right. We have to... Be positive about the work atmosphere because sometimes you see good stuff, sometimes you see bad stuff. All right, but you have to love your job, just like your children. And sometimes you hate them. Some other days you love them, but you love them every day. Correct. So it's 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 the same thing that applies to teamwork as well. That's why we coined the term super synergy of the united hearts. And team stands for together, everyone achieves more. Thank you. Thank you. So let's look at that same question again. Can Atomy be a long term sustainable company going forward, given that we're already 10 years old? So, in the book, all right, there was five key characteristics that was defined by Simon Sinek, which is very, very valid. I love that, 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 that uh, definition, all right? The five key characteristics of an infinite player. So, I want to look at the five key characteristics in the context of atomy, in the context of atomy. So the first characteristic is that the company must have a just cause, must have a vision, all right? And the company's vision for atomy is to rewrite the history of network marketing. We all agree, right? Because there's so much negativity in the network marketing uh, space, all right? Uh, pricing of products were horrendous, all right? There was many layers of commission payout, uh, you have to pay money to, to learn and so on and so forth. So when Mr. Park all right, created this company, he really wanted to rewrite the rules, but not the law, all right, because we are not breaking the law, right? We are just rewriting the rules. So he wants to change the rules of network marketing. And the rules is that to create a company all right, that gives you low-cost product, because that should be the way, because direct marketing means products are shipped directly from the company directly to you. There's no intermediary. As a result, those prices that you receive as a consumer should be very low cost. Right? That's why he came up with the concept of absolute quality and absolute price. Okay. The next key characteristic is you've got to have a courageous leader. All right? Chairman Park is a very courageous leader. In 2009, when he started the company, and has this vision, this just cost, all right, to rewrite the history of network marketing, it was a big, big challenge. All right? Many people do not believe in this vision of his. He had 17 people with him at that time who believed his vision and followed him. And today, the 17 of them are today the top 10% earner of the company. All right? They followed his vision and it took him a lot of courage all right? to believe that he can make this company successful by offering absolute quality products at absolute price. Because a lot of people say, how can this company make money when you don't need to collect a single cent for membership entry? All right? You don't even pay commission, you don't even pay a referral fee. How can this company succeed? All right? It took him uh, three years to do that. And because of his courage, and the courage of the 17 group of people that first joined in, 2009, all right? the company turned around after the third year, and the rest is history. All right? We saw this happening, and 
you saw the tremendous growth rate of the company in the last 10 years, right? We hit 1 billion in nine years, right? Which is an amazing uh, performance, right? So the next thing is the characteristic is a trusting team, right? That's why he emphasized so much about teamwork, all right? Trusting team is about honesty and integrity. When you work with your team in SME, all right? You've got to be honest, you have to have integrity. When you have honesty and integ integrity, what do you build? You build trust. Right? Trust is a feeling. Uh. Trust is not something that you can teach. It's a feeling. Right? So if you feel that the people that you're working with are honest as well, have an integrity, then trust starts to grow within the team, right? and the team starts to perform very, very well. All right? And I can see all right, the leadership team in Atomy, right? Dr. Lee Sang-yong, uh, VP, uh, President Kim, uh, 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 Chairman Park, as well as all the first layer of the mastership leader, the crown masters, you know, the, the uh, imperial masters are all working very, very tightly and there's tremendous trust, all right, in the top leadership team, all right, which I don't see in many other companies, all right. In the company that I worked for, all right, there was no trust at all because everybody was for themselves, all right. That's why the company disappeared on the face of the earth. Okay, so honesty and integrity is very, very key. And I think I see this also you know, percolating down to the country level as well as to the team level in each of the country. So it's very, very important for all of us to ensure that we continue to promote integrity and honesty in the work that we do in Anatomy. Okay, the fourth characteristics is a worthy rival. A worthy rival, all right? You see, Microsoft perceives Apple as a worth, it's not a, a worthy rival, but a competitive rival. So they spend all their time, all right, trying to win over Apple. Because when you position your rival as a competitor, you start to have an attitude of winning, right? You've got to have the attitude, you must win over this comp competitor. When you treat and position your rival as a worthy rival, all right, then your attitude becomes an attitude of improvement. Because you, their strength is your weakness. Your weak, vice versa, your strength is their weakness as well, correct? That's why companies survive so long in the industry. Because they know that they have strengths and they continue to look at worthy rival that they can copy and learn from so that they can continue to stay in business. You don't have to be number one in business. You just have to have only 15 minutes, wow. Okay, <laughs> you don't have to be uh, number one in business. You either have to be in front or back. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Sometimes your products are better than in competition. Sometimes your competition products are better than yours. All right? This is all about having a worthy rival. And the last key characteristics is to have a flexible playbook. All right? You've got to be adaptable to change. All right? The company has to be adapt themselves to change, to change to the environment around them, change about what's happening in the industry, robotics, artificial intelligence. These are areas that Ms. Chairman Park is looking into. All right? Why did we continue to focus on improving ourselves? Look at System 6 being replaced by FAME. Look at our repackaging of a pomegranate. Look at you know, uh, the, the introduction of the absolute. We are continuously improving our product offering to ensure that we continue to improve ourselves rather than focus on how to win over the competition. So if you look at some of these this five key characteristics in the context of Atomy, let me ask you the question again. Will Atomy be a sustainable long-term company? Yes, right? Thank you. It, absolutely yes. This is my assessment. Okay, so let's give Atomy a big round of support. Okay, now let's look at the uh, company now. All right, this is in Korea, all right, if you look at Korea, uh, now Atomy is ranked number two in Korea, all right? Again, it's not about winning, right? It's about moving your, your company to a position of influence, all right? Com when Atomy started in 2009, they were in the 15 or 16 position, right? Today, they are in position number two, next to the largest network marketing company called Amway, we all know. Amway is a, what? 60-year-old uh, uh, company. We are a 10-year-old company. All right, so look at the, the global revenue of uh, Atomy, all right, I mean, in uh, the last uh, 10 years, all right, last year in 2018, we reached a global revenue of 1.1 billion US dollar, very impressive performance. 
We are also featured, uh, or rather, Mr. Park is also featured in uh, the Forbes magazine as well as the Fortune magazine, right? No other network marketing company CEO or chairman has been featured in both the Forbes magazine and the Fortune magazine. What does it mean to us as a member and as a <laughs> business builder? It legitimizes the Atomy business for every one of us. So as we talk to our prospective member, as we bring members into our platform, all right, it gives us confidence that we are now selling to these people to join us in a very profitable and legitimate business. Right. And we also featured in CNBC, right, there was a 20, video, a 20 minutes video clip uh, done in Korea featuring Atomy without Atomy paying a single cent. Right. These are all confirmation right, and endorsement of Atomy as a, a premier network marketing company. And I'm glad to hear from uh, you know, Sharon Rose Master James that uh, you know, Atomy Malaysia has become a super brand now. Okay, fantastic. All right. Another round of applause for uh, Atomy. So who are the people behind Atomy? Uh, we have a company called Coma BNH. Uh, BNH stands for Beauty and Health. BNH actually is a, uh, a joint venture between two legal entities. One is called Carry, the Korean Atomic Energy Research Institute. Uh, they have tremendous uh, uh, technologies that they have developed. Uh, they are a government agency. And you have Coma, who is a 100-year-old company involved in pharmaceutical beauty and health business, all right? Mr. Park do not want to get involved in the pharmaceutical business because it's very, very complex. So it's decided to stay with just beauty and health. So they created a joint venture company called Koma BH, which stands for beauty and health. And Koma BH is primarily the manufacturer and the product uh, uh, company that produce all the products that get shipped to all of us in the country. All right. Obviously, that, that uh, scenario is changing slightly because of the change in the environment. All right. And we talk a little bit about that uh, later on. Uh, the message strategy is actually our product strategy, all right? The absolute quality, absolute price has continued to become, all right, the, the key leading differentiator in Atomy compared with other network marketing companies. <coughs> message comes from two words, mass and prestige, all right? It's delivering prestige quality products at affordable prices to the masses. That's what the message strategy is all about. So, um, look at our products. Uh, our number one selling product is still Hemohim. Our next best selling skincare product is called the Absolute Skincare System. I'm pretty sure every one of you here all right, have used the Absolute Skincare products, right? Yes? Okay. And uh, if you look at some of the, the accolades of the skincare products, the kind of awards that this product has, has, has uh, uh, received, all right? 50, 538,000 sets were sold on the first day when it was launched. All right? Amazing, amazing results, all right? Goes to shows that this is a indeed premium quality skincare product, okay? Uh, our toothbrush as well, all right? This is called, called the one second toothbrush, all right? We sold one toothbrush every second now, all right? And, uh, you know, it's still one of our top selling products and the return rate is 0.12%, all right? Which means that the average industry return rate is about 2.59 or 3%, all right? In atomy, it's 0.12%. What does it mean? It means that our products are good quality, that people, when they use, do not return the product, even though we give out a 60 days money back guarantee. Okay. Success system, James talked about earlier, right? There are three key education uh, programs that all of you who are going to do this business could be involved with. One is the Success Academy, which is this event. You have the one day seminar, which is free. Right, that happens twice a month, one in English, one in Chinese. And then you have the Lifestyle Centre. We have seven Lifestyle Centres here in Singapore now. All right, it's, if you want to learn more about our products and a, deep, a, a deeper understanding of our compensation plan, go to the Lifestyle Centre and learn from the Lifestyle Centre. All right, this is the success system. All right, it's happening everywhere now. Some countries have it every month. Some countries have it once every two months. In Singapore, it's once every two months. All right, it's happening all over the world in 14 countries. Right. Uh, Atomy also has three cultures that you all need to understand as well. A principle-centered culture based on ethical network marketing. It's all about honesty, integrity, and goodness. All right. Mr. Park shared about this uh, in his video before. All right. The other one is culture of a company growth. All right. The company wants to grow with the members, want to grow with the builders, and also want to grow with the suppliers. All right. This is the culture of Atomy. And lastly, is the culture of sharing, all right? When you make all your money, all right, it's important that all of us, all right, have to learn to pay back, pay back, all right, give back to society. This is one of a very, very big 
uh, how, how, how I call corporate social responsibility of enemy. Okay, and just to share a little bit about myself, last month uh, I was in Cambodia. I traveled 1,000 kilometers, right, to five rural schools or villages in Cambodia to donate bicycles and 10 kilograms of rice to each of the poor children in Cambodia. All right. And I want to stand here and thank seven of my enemy friends in here who supported me, all right, gave me the money to buy those bicycles, and we were able to go there and donate those bicycles and bag of rice to the children in Cambodia. All right. So that's the culture of sharing. Okay. All right, so we are now in 14 countries, as you know, right? Uh, what's coming next? You know? Vietnam, right? And what's coming next year? China, obviously. And anywhere else? Huh? Yeah. India, maybe, I don't know. Uh, England is another uh, country in the pipeline, right? So we have got, uh, in Korea, Atomy has received lots and lots of uh, export awards, all right? Literally every year, you see from 2011 all the way to 2018, right? You can see the volume of export that the company has, has, has uh, uh, awards that the company has received. And the volume has increased year over year, which means that over time, all right, 50% or more of Atomy's global businesses come from overseas and not in Korea anymore. Today, the balance is Korea here, all right, and global is here. All right, very soon, the balance is going to tilt. All right, global is going to be a much, much bigger business for Atomy when China opens, when India opens, when Europe opens, when Middle East opens. Okay, so with that, Atomy has a global distribution strategy, all right? This is part of adapting to change, all right? Mr. Park knows that you cannot produce every single product from Korea to ship it to a consumer. You have to start looking at ways to increase the portfolio of our products, and he adopted this global sourcing, global strategy, uh, sales strategy. So now a lot of our products in our portfolio platform, all right, uh, comes from Vietnam, right? Coconut, uh, water, uh, Cam uh, Cambodia is Kampok uh, black pepper, all right, uh, stockings from Japan, many, many products from Taiwan as well. So this is going forward, the new strategy of the company, and this has to do with adapting to change. So with that, I'm going to quickly now go through the compensation plan, all right? Uh, the compensation plan, like I said, it's uh, quite a detailed plan, but here I'm just sharing the overview. So if you really want to learn more about the compensation plan, I highly encourage you to go to the lifestyle centers and learn from the lifestyle centers. So very quickly, what is the usual places of our spending? All right, these are the usual places. In the context of Singapore, you, uh, NTUC Fair Price, the Department of Stores, the Cold Storage, the Giants of the World, and the 7-Eleven and so on. Okay? So to understand the spending pattern and also the business model, let's look at the traditional retail business model. You obviously have the manufacturers and the distribution hub. And then you have the retail store or the supermarket, right? And then you have the advertisers. And lastly, you have you and me, the consumer. Right? What has happened is that you know, the advertisers and the retail stores and the supermarket come together in a tripartite partnership with the manufacturers and the distribution hub to create a tripartite entity, all right? They spend a lot of dollars, all right, in advertisements, in radio ad, TV ad, social media, newspaper, movie stars, celebrities, to do what? To do a thing called drawing consumers to spend in their store and buy more of their products, all right? As a result, they form this partnership which is completely outside of us, the consumer. All right, and all we have to do, we have no choice in the past before we had Atomy to always go to these places and buy our products and goods, right? And the only way for us to save money is to wait for promotions, all right? Every Tuesday, every Wednesday, or every Thursday, right? You go in there, you, you work for the promotion, buy one for one for free, buy two, get one free, that kind of st stuff, right? That's the only way we can do to save money from our pocket. So, in this scenario, the manufacturer and the distribution are constantly drawing you to spend money with them and they continue to make money from you and me. All right? That is the traditional model. Now, let's look at the Atomy model. Right? You're a manufacturer, you still have the retail stores, you have the advertisers, and the Atomy business model, we completely eliminate these two entities, all right? the retailers as well as the advertisers, because they have no value to add in the Atomy business model. And now, 
we form a close, tightly partnership with the consumer. All right, this is the Atomy model. All right, and the consumer has to be referred. Right, when you come here, you join a member. For all of you, you already a member. You always have a sponsor. Right, someone you have to refer you into the platform to become a member. Now you have an alternate choice. You have an alternate choice to buy all your products from Atomy now, right? Rather than the supermarket that you used to spend. Right? And you can start to purchase online 24 by 7 and the product ships directly to you if you spend more than $150 in Singapore. And all right, there's no joining fee, no compulsory purchase, no auto ship, no annual fees, no website fee, simply a no risk business model. I don't hear any clapping. <laughs> okay. This is Atomy, all right? It is a non-store online shopping mall. That's who we are. And the company is very generous, right? They take 35% of the revenue that they earn and they transfer it back. All right, they return you back the money in terms of commission that you will earn as you build the business, right? This is the Atomy model. So it's a win-win uh, situation for both the company and the consumer, all right? You get people empowering people. And Atomy is a 100% consumption-driven business. The company don't make money if you and I don't consume Atomy products. You don't make money if your downline do not consume Atomy products. It's as simple as that, right? So it's 100% consumer-driven business. If you look at the marketing plan, it's no joining fees. We covered that earlier. And it's a very balanced and fair system. So let's quickly go through that. All right, all the Atomy products comes with an associated PV, or what we call point value. So every product that you buy has an associated point value that goes with it. All right, different products carry different point value. And when you come into the business, you join as a member, no joining fee. All right, there's no annual fee as well. There's no auto ship. All you have to do is to maintain your membership. If you don't buy anything for one full year, you've got to make sure that on the anniversary of your joining, you just have to buy one item. So what's the cheapest item on Atomy today? All right. Hand wash, five dollars, huh? What else is cheaper than the hand wash? Huh? Ah, the sponge, right? Four dollars only. You save one dollar. And if you buy a four dollar product, you, you renew a membership for two more months. Is that wonderful? All right. No flushing, all the money that you spend that you receive on your personal PV stays with you forever. Okay? There's no lifetime accumulation, uh, lifetime accumulated personal PV. Right. Uh, the marketing structure is very, very simple. It's a binary system you can recruit as many people as you want across the world in an unlimited level, right? There's no limit, bottomless level, all right? And Mr. Pub talked about in a global one atomy system. We are the only network marketing company in the world that implement a one global atomy server system. Amazing, all right? This is part of his vision, all right? To create a highly uh, sustainable all right, solutions for the company that allows every one of us to do global sales when you come onto this platform. So when you join Atomy in Singapore, you're not joining a Singapore business. You are building and joining an international business. All right? So when you come on board, you start off as a member. If you purchase anything less than 300,000 points of products, once you hit 3,100 points uh, and above, you become an agent. When you hit 700,000 points, you become a special agent. When you hit 1.5 million, become a dealer. And when you hit 2.4 million points, you become an exclusive distributor. And that's where you stop spending on your own anymore. All right? And there's a reason for doing that. Okay? So the key thing to remember here is that you need to at least spend $10,000 when you come on board as a member. Don't come on board, sign up, and do nothing. All right? Especially those who are recruiting new members, make sure that you encourage a member to buy at least $10,000 worth of products. Okay. Very quickly, general commission, there are three ways that we pay uh, the people in Atomy, right? One is the general commission. Uh, general uh, commission constitute 44% of the 35% I talk about, all right? And if you look at the, the, the chart here, which uh, is fairly complex, I don't want to deal into too much, right? The way they design the compensation plan is such that, right, you will limit your earning once you reach a certain level in your business building. Right? And that's the goodness of Atomy. Because Mr. Park wants to make sure that every one of us have an equal opportunity to make the same amount of money as we stay on and build this infinite business together. Right? So if you look at the last arrow at the bottom, he says your 
someone can blow up for me. Uh. Your general commission earnings uh, ceiling stops here, right? So when your personal PV is at 2.4 million and when you have a very, 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 very large left group and a right group, all right, your daily PVs, group PVs on your left and your right can easily hit 15 million. You talk to our, you know, our, our crown masters, you talk to our imperial masters, you know, the daily left group PV can be 150 million, 300 million. That kind of numbers. So when you hit 15 million, that's it. The company only pay you a thousand five hundred sing dollar plus minus every day. All right, that's what you get every every day in your general commission. So general commissions are paid in Singapore every Thursday. So whatever money you earn from Friday onwards is accumulated until Wednesday the following week, and on Thursday, company pays you right through your bank account. The next one is the master's bonus. The mastership bonus. It's a bonus for leaders who wants to come in and build a serious business for themselves. All right? So the mastership bonus is paid twice a week, or twice a month, I'm sorry, on the 17th and on the last day of the month. Okay? So it's a two-week cycle, all right? different from the general commission, which is calculated daily. This is calculated over two weeks accumulated totals. And uh, there are seven levels in the mastership. You come in as a sales master. Diamond Master, which I am, a Sharon Rose Master, there are many Sharon Rose Masters here, and a, you know, two or three uh, Star Masters, uh, three Star Masters here in Singapore, with the Royal Masters, Crown Masters, and then the Imperial Masters. Right? So this is the seven. And this is how the company distribute the 20% pool uh, to each of those mastership level. So for those of you who are serious, I highly encourage you to be at least, to come in and do this business, to be a sales master to start. Okay. So what's the auto sales master? Auto sales master is that you are making money every two weeks. All right? And to do that, you need to have lots of people on your left leg, lots of people on your right leg, and you can potentially earn up to an average of $2,500 a month. All right? Of bonuses, all right? As well as your general commission. So when you become a star, uh, sales master, your personal PV has to be at 700,000 point. You've got to have a group PV of 2.5 million in left leg and in your right leg. And what the company will reward you one time only, a box of Hemo Him, now a fame uh, skincare set as well as the evening care for set. All right? The next level is the uh, Diamond Master level. All right? Your personal PV has to be at 1.5 million. You've got to have two sales master on your left, two sales master on your right. You get now an additional three items I mentioned earlier and a Apple iPad. Next level is the uh, Sharon Rose Master level. Uh, your personal PV has to be at 2.4 million. Now you've got to have two diamond in your left, two diamond in your right. This time you get cash one time of $2,500 and the travel tickets for two to somewhere in Asia. I think last year they went to uh, Jeju Island. Next one is the Star Master. All right, you earn $12,000 cash one time and then you get a, a travel tickets for four to somewhere in Asia as well. But you've got to have to have two Sharon Rose Master on your left and two Sharon Rose Master on your right. And then the next one is the, uh, what is that? Huh? My eyes is uh, Royal Master, right? To be a Royal Master, you've got to have two Star Master on your left, two Star Master on the right. This time you get $60,000 one time. You get a debit card worth $2,500 a month to spend. So that's where you start to bring your partners, your downlines to eat lunch and dinner every day, okay? And you get a car allowance of $1,200 and air ticket for four to travel around Asia. The next one is the Crown Master, right? This is one of the highest level, all right? You now have to have two royal on the left, two royal on the right. This time you receive 430,000 sing doll. Is that good enough? Not good enough, huh? Good enough already, $430,000. All right, it's one full year of, of a chief executive officer's earning. <laughs> you get a $6,000 debit card to spend and four travel tickets. And then the highest level is the Imperial Master level. All right, this is where you get two crown in left, two crown in right. This time around, all right, you get four travel tickets, you get a chauffeur. All right, in Singapore, you probably get a budget to hire a, a driver. You get now $15,000 of spending money in debit card every month. So you can literally buy lunch and dinner every day for your partners and your downlines. All right? And you get an office space, about 1,000 square foot, and a secretary. All right? Isn't that wonderful? And most of beautiful part of all is that you receive $1.3 million cash all right? delivered to you on stage when you become an Imperial Master. And Chairman Park will personally drive the forklift to deliver the 1,000 
dollars, one million dollars to you personally, right? And here's just a quick example of some of our imperial masters in the last uh, one to two years, all right? We have, uh, you know, in the year 2018, in the early part of 2019, our first imperial master was a lady called Park Ju Yong Su, all right? Uh, she used to be a, a, a restaurant owner who runs a dark rice restaurant that failed and now very successful in anatomy. Lee Dak Wu is the second imperial master, he used to work for many, many, many network marketing companies for 17 years, never make a single cent. When he joined anatomy, he's now the second imperial master. Right? The third one, uh, uh, Kim Jong Sung Yu, he used to be a taxi driver. All right? And now he's a very successful atomian. So what does it tell you? It tells you that in Tommy business, everybody can be successful, irrespective of your professions, irrespective of your skills, irrespective of your qualification. And the last uh, 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 lady here, Kim Jong Suk, is actually my direct upline in Korea. It's our fourth imperial master. She's in her 60s already, late 60s. All right, and she actually uh, took a two-year sabbatical away from Anatomy when she was a crown master, and she came back. Uh, was it this year? All right. Why? Because everybody under her was working so hard, she got automatically promoted to Imperial Master. How wonderful is that? Only Atomy give you this kind of opportunity. So let's give Atomy another round of applause. <laughs> All right, so let's quickly look at the compensation plan of a typical company. All right, in no typical uh, network marketing company, the people at the top, 3 to 5% of those, earns a lot of the money. All right, and all those people that come in late into the game, all right, earns very, very little. And this is the model that Mr. Park was so upset about. He wanted to change the rule. That's why he wrote, he has written a book actually about the whole concept. So what we do is that we cut out the top layer. All right, we make everybody work together as a team. We set a ceiling to, an, to our income earning of 50,000 US dollars a month. That's the limit, all right? So every one of us will not earn beyond that. So it's fair for everyone to have the op opportunity to earn that kind of money. And then to achieve that, all right, you have to work hard all right, to come in as a sales master, work your way to Diamond, Sharon Rose, all the way to Imperial Master. You will have the ability now to earn the $50,000 a month for your general commissions. But if you look at the bonuses and other benefits, you can actually earn a lot, lot more, all right, between one hundred to $150,000 US dollars a month. So with that, there's no time limit. There's unlimited levels, right? So you can take 10 years, you can take 20 years, all right, to become a Imperial Masters. All right, we had a Crown Master that visited us a couple of days ago, and it took him 11 years to become a Crown Master. It's okay, right? 11 years to make Crown Masters, uh, to make Crown Master to earn 120,000 US dollars a month. That's what he shared with us, all right? It's amazing, all right? So what's the requirements of doing the Anatomy business? Very simple, is to be a lover and lawyer customer. All right, and in summary, I want to say that you sign up for a no-risk free membership. You'd be a lawyer, a Tommy product consumer. All right, share your personal testimonial. Right, Lim Kopi, tell story, yeah? And eventually, you're going to make money, okay? You start to build your own global consumer network, all right? Generate your own PV, your personal PV as your group PV through simply consuming Atomy products, all right? And lastly, start earning your passive income towards eventual financial freedom over three generations. So with that, I conclude my session. Thank you for your attention. I don't know whether I've picked up more time than I should, but thank you very much.